is meteorologist Jordan Ambrose, and this is the new thing that we're looking at. This is potential tropical cyclone nine. Potential tropical cyclone nine is an area of low pressure that has developed off of the tip of the Yucatan. Well, really just to the south near the Caribbean. So it is a 30 mile per hour potential tropical cyclone. The only difference is it does not have its lower level circulation. So what does that mean? So that means that right now it's really producing tropical depression level winds, but they expect it to strengthen and then enter near the Yucatan Channel between Cancun and the tip of Cuba. And they, they, do, uh, they are producing now hurricane watches for the area. Now, what does that mean for the wiregrass? I'm going to tell you very soon. So right now, here's a broader look. This is our area of low pressure. You can see it's not all the way organized just yet. Still has some things that need to get done. The convection is not fully wrapped around the center, but like I said, they're predicting that it will in the next 24 to 36 hours. And that's why we need to watch this. So here is the latest cone from the National Hurricane Center. Around 30 miles per hour currently as of 10 a.m but this will slowly move to the north, and then it's predicted to strengthen at least to a category one by Wednesday, by, by your Wednesday. So it's gonna move slowly, but then it will speed up as it gets caught, as there's a low level jet and a cold front that will help move this further up to the north fairly fast. And this is where they think a category two hurricane, possibly even a category three hurricane could make landfall in somewhere in the cone of uncertainty. Now I do wanna let you guys know, as you can see, Dothan is on the left side of the cone of uncertainty, which means the possibility of a landfalling storm really is from Destin, Florida, right here, all the way as far west, as far east, is Tampa, Florida. That's a large margin of error. So that's why I want you guys to watch not only Facebook Lives in the daytime, but also WDHN News at 5, WDHN News at 6, and also News at 10. And we're going to do some Facebook Lives in between as well. So anywhere between this large area, like I said, between Destin and Tampa, as of now, have the potential to see a Category 2 or 3 hurricane make landfall within this area. So we need to watch this very, very closely. So what are the possible outcomes? Now for your day, nothing to worry about. Temperatures will be in the 90s. It will actually be beautiful outside. It's the first, the second day of fall, which means it's gonna feel nice. It's gonna be feel, feel beautiful, but things will change gradually, especially as we get closer to your Wednesday and Thursday. But it's highly track dependent. A track closer to Destin and Panama City would mean significant impacts across the wiregrass. If this tracks all the way to Tampa, little to no impacts will be felt. If it tracks somewhere in between, it's all dependent on what happens. So I'm gonna show you two different scenarios of what we're thinking of what could happen. Now, they're barren, we have a barren model and we also have the GFS, which is the American model. The barren model is predicting more of a northerly track closer to Panama City and Destin, which means that we're gonna see a lot of rain, possibly four to six inches in some spots. Again, one scenario, this could track further out to our east. I'm gonna show you that scenario as well. So this is the GFS scenario. GFS scenario does show a hurricane forming right between Cuba and the tip, tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. It slowly moves to the north, but then speeds up. But you can see this landfall point is way farther from us, just to the north of Tampa near Cedar Key. In this case, we're just gonna see some rain and maybe some minimal impacts, nothing major whatsoever. Now some gusty winds will be possible, but nothing that would be significant across the wiregrass. So that's one scenario, but here's our barren model scenario, and this is why we need to take, uh, take a look at this. This other model, our barren model, shows it going right through Panama City and Destin, which means that impacts would be significant across the wiregrass if this does, if this does become a Category 2 or even Category 3 hurricane. Some models, just be honest, will predict stronger. So we have to prepare at least for the possibility. Good time to go over those hurricane prep, your per hurricane prep kits. Just get flashlights, batteries, all that small stuff. Even if you don't necessarily need it, if you don't have to use it, you can always use it for next year because the possibility is there, at least like I said, from Destin all the way to Tampa Bay, that we could see a strong hurricane make landfall somewhere in between. So we're gonna continue to watch this over the next few days. We only have 2.5 to three days before this system potentially makes landfall, about three to three and a half days, excuse me, before this potential, uh, this potential system makes landfall somewhere between the Panhandle and the Big Bend and maybe even along the uh, eastern, the western, the western coast of the Florida Peninsula. So as of right now, like I said, if you go to Home Depot, batteries, flashlights, maybe get a weather radio, 
even though it's not necessarily a guarantee. We're going to watch this over the next few days. Then there's updates every six hours with the new cone. There's one that comes at 10 a.m. and 4 a.m., 4 p.m. So 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and also 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. repeats every six hours. So we're going to continue to watch that. And I'm here to answer any questions. I'm actually going to look at the Facebook Live. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And I'm going to share anything, any questions or any concerns that you guys have. So as far as timing, um, as far as timing, timing as of right now seems to be that Thursday time frame, maybe early Friday. Thursday to early Friday seems to be the general consensus for these particular storms. Now, if this storm does form and it does move a little faster than expected, it could be there as early as Thursday afternoon. The National Hurricane Center is really honing in around Thursday evening. But again, you give or take maybe six to seven hours. It really depends on the speed of this storm, the track, and the intensity. And as far as intensity, we are looking at the possibility. We can't even rule out the possibility of a major hurricane. So like I said, there's two models. I'm going to show you two different models and as far as impacts for the wiregrass area, because that was another question. If this particular model, which is the GFS, goes further out to the west, way near Tampa, you see, and we will be on the western side of the storm, which means that we will still get some rain. We still might get some small, minimal impacts, maybe some gusty winds here or there, but impacts would be fairly minimal. Now, this is another model, and this is our barren model, and this is the reason why we need to watch this storm. If this storm develops and it takes more of that northerly route that we're expecting, this would bring significant impacts across the wiregrass. So it's really important, at least over the next 24 hours, that we need to watch this system. So like I said, anywhere, and this is actually, this is actually where the National Hurricane Center is designating this cone. So as you can see, the Barron model is on the western side of this cone, taking it right over Destin, Florida. And the GFS model, which is another model that we use, is on the eastern side it's on the eastern side of this cone. So the National Hurricane Center kind of met in the middle and they came up with the two basically extremes and then they made their own cone. And this is where we kind of fall, where anywhere between Destin and Tampa have the possibility of seeing that landfall. And the National Hurricane Center has mentioned, and again, you always prepare for a category higher. The National Hurricane Center has mentioned and has also stated that models have shown stronger solutions, which means that if they're showing a Cat 2 to Cat 3 at landfall, it's not out the realm of possibility that a Cat 4 could be in question. Now, where does that go? Like I said, anywhere between Destin and Tampa. So this is where we really have to watch. So this is the official guidance as of now, but I do want to mention the National Hurricane Center has said that this is more of a conservative outlook, which means that this could be a stronger outlook and even show a category three, maybe even four, depending on how this really develops over the next 24 hours. That's why I said the next 24 to 36 hours will be very important, but the good thing is we finally have a cone. We finally have a little bit more guidance of where this thing is going. Now it looks like as of now, areas of Louisiana and Mississippi. Looks like you're fine. I remember that was a talk. Even Texas, they were at one point. But now I think anywhere in the panhandle all the way to the western peninsula of Florida do need to watch this system. And like I said, we're going to be here WDHN daytime at 11, so you are free and more than welcome to watch. I want you guys to tune in. And models are showing things stronger, but you remember, do not focus on every single model run. Now, we will get some consistency over time. And we do have new models coming in, and they come in typically every six hours as well. So we're going to watch the models, and we're going to also watch and see what we see because the National Hurricane Center, I mean the National Hurricane Aircraft, National Hurricane Center, excuse me, the Hurricane, Hurricane Hunters, can't get my words out, the Hurricane Hunters will be flying out into the storm later on this afternoon and this evening, also to get a better view on the storm, get a better profile, also see where the low level circulation is. So right now, this is the estimated circulation, but at the same time, sometimes storms develop small other circulation. So it really depends. There's a lot of factors that we need to watch. One factor is this front all the way in Texas. This front will help lift it north. 
Also, this is a tropical storm in the Pacific. So sometimes what happens is it provides shear and that could sometimes make the storm slower to develop. So there's a lot of factors that really go into the development of this system. That's why we're just watching, we're waiting, and we're taking all the guidance that we can get at the moment. So expect things to change and expect to just be prepared. Be prepared for category two, category three hurricane, but can't rule out even a category four. But at the same time, things are too far out to tell to see if we will see any direct impacts due to the uncertainty. Like I said, if things are further out to the right near Tampa, little to no impacts. Maybe we'll get some rain, we'll get some gusty winds, but at the same time, if this is further out near Destin, Apalachicola, Panama City, then we could see significant impacts. So it's really a fine line of really where this storm tracks over the next few days. So we're gonna be here, like I said, as the storm speeds up, we get this cone will shift. There's updates every six hours. Next one will be at 4 p.m. The next one will be at 10 p.m. And then we'll get another cone at 4 a.m. as well. So this cycle will continue. We're gonna continue to get more information. The storm will continue to develop and we're going to get even better model guidance once the hurricane hunters finally fly into the storm. Get some great information, but like I said, even if you're outside the cone, I do think Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, you're good. I think now if you're anywhere near the panhandle all the way through Tampa, you need to watch this storm closely. So we're going to take some questions for the about the next five to seven minutes. Where, like I said, we're going to get ready for WDH in daytime. I'm going to have more information on the storm. If you guys have any more, if you guys have any more questions, like I said, please let me know. And the good thing is that we still are about three days away. So hurricane prep kits. I know we talked about this multiple times. Flashlights, weather radio, batteries, water, things like that. Even the generator. Now that doesn't mean, like we said, we're going to necessarily see that. But at the same time, the good thing is you rather have it and you rather have it and not use it than the potential something does happen and you don't have those materials. And then you can always use it for next year. You can always reuse batteries. You can always use some flashlights. You can always use it for the future. So just stock up right now. And then if you don't need to use it, that's absolutely great. We don't want any hurricanes across the wire grass. But if you do have to use it, you know you will be prepared. And this will be a good time just to do that, to refill your hurricane prep kits and also just look over your emergency aid kits as well. So we're going to continue to watch this and we're going to see where the model guidance does shift. Like I said, I'm free to open any questions for about the next four to five minutes.